So I have a question for you. How bad do you want it? How bad do you want it? Now that question has been a driving force in my life. Far before I was a world-recognizable pawnbroker, far before I was a New York Times bestseller, and far before I was a star of a reality show or a personality on that reality show. I ask myself each and every morning, how bad do you want it? So let me tell you my story, my story about fear. In, when I was seven years old, my grandfather, my popsy, had a pawn shop on Skid Row. You would know where Skid Row is now because it's where the MGM Casino is, in the heart of Detroit. And every Saturday morning, I would go with my grandfather to the deli and pick up hot dogs. And every Saturday, we'd take him to the store, and my grandfather would make hot dogs for all the employees. There were four of them. And on this one particular Saturday, I'm seven years old. A gentleman comes in, an adult, who is looking for a hydraulic jack. For those of you that don't know what a hydraulic jack is, it's a tool that goes underneath your car. You hit a little handle and it lifts up the car. You can change your tires. I'm not going to bore you with the story, but I'm going to tell you the conclusion. The conclusion was I sold that hydraulic jack. But I had a lot to prove that day. I had a lot to prove to my grandfather. I had a lot to prove because my father was working there, and I had a lot to prove to me. I succeeded to sell that hydraulic jack for $10. I closed my first million dollar deal at seven years old for 10 bucks. Because in 1957, I used to get 10 cents allowance. So $10 was like a fortune. Right away, that day, I was hooked. I was hooked, and I didn't even realize that I was hooked, because I was only seven. I was hooked to be a negotiator, and I was definitely hooked to be a pawnbroker. And that was my first sale. That was my first deal. How exciting. We're going to fast forward to 1967. Hippies, love children, Jimi Hendrix, Led Zeppelin, and Les Gold as a 17-year-old. So I saw 1957 as an or 1967 as an opportunity, an opportunity to make some more money. I was still working at the pawn shop, but I saw it as an opportunity to make even more money. So what did I do? I started manufacturing chain belts, chain vests, necklaces. They used to call them slave bracelets. And I manufactured them at my house. And I got up enough courage to call the J.L. Hudson Company. J.L. Hudson Company is on Woodward, was on Woodward. And it was an iconic department store. And I called him up and I said, this is Les Gold from Gold Associates. I need to make an appointment with the buyer. They accepted. They accepted my offer. So I met my obligations and I went there that day and I had my briefcase in my hand filled with the stuff that I made. My heart was beating a thousand beats a minute. I was so scared, but as a salesperson, as a salesman, you can't show that. You can't show that fear, so I didn't. I knocked on the door, they opened up the door, and I saw steps. I was so nervous. I was so scared. Each step felt like eternity to climb up. Each step felt like I had a 45-pound weight that I was hauling on my back. Couldn't show the fear. They open up the door, and I see a bank of secretaries, a secretary pool, not the kind that you swim in, but the kind that these ladies are typing away. Oh, right, typewriters, something most of you don't have a clue on what they are. There are these machines that go click, 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 and there's numbers and letters that come out. They're not computers. And I sit down in his office. He takes out my display. He walks around to these secretaries. 
And all I hear is, I like that, I like that, I like that. This is cool, this is nice. He comes back into his office and he says, Mr. Gold, success. We're going to buy your merchandise. Oh man, 17. Still in high school, still working at the pawn shop, but I sold my stuff to the J.L. Hudson Company. I was hooked at seven, I'm even more hooked at 17. What an event, it was fabulous. 1981, in 1981, I had a wife, I had a daughter, I had a house, my wife was pregnant by the way, and I worked at Sam's loan office. And on February 21st of 1981, my, my child was going to be born on February 23rd. And I walk into my father's room and I, in his office and I called him LG, it was his nickname. And I said, LG, I want you there with me when my child is born. I didn't know if it was gonna be a boy or a girl, it didn't matter. It's family, that's what's important. Family is important. He says, Les, I only close for funerals. Really? Pissed me off. On Monday, February 23rd, we were fortunate enough to have a son. His name is Seth. I took a two week vacation to help my wife with, the, with our son. I was so upset because family is most important. On March the 10th, on, a, on March the 12th, I go back to work and I'm just so upset that I quit Sam's loan office. The only thing that I knew, that was it. I knew nothing else other than Sam's loan office. So as I'm walking out, the other employee said, Les, you'll be back. Because what they thought they knew is that I had obligations. I had a career. I had a house payment. I have two kids now. But I kept walking down that hallway to the front door, which seemed like eternity. Because it was one thing that I wasn't concerned about. Failing. Because what they didn't know was that failure was not an option. I couldn't fail. Because if I failed that, I'd lose my house, I'd lose my car, I'd lose the food on my table, and I'd lose my career. Because that's when I opened up American Jewelry. Because when you fail, it's over. There is no going back. You fail in your marriage, you fail in business, you don't go back. But as time goes on, you realize that you're going to make mistakes. We all do, we're human beings. We make mistakes. And the good thing about mistakes, it teaches you how to repair them. It teaches you how to move forward. And as you move forward and you have success, you want to repeat success. You don't want to repeat mistakes. Because that will kill you. That will make you end. That will be the end. There will be no going back, ever. So now let's talk about you. How bad do you want it? And how far will you go to get it? For example, if you're a software company, do you offer training? If you're a retailer, do you offer different types of merchandise? If you're a restaurateur, nowadays, do you offer gluten-free? Do you offer vegan? If you're a Detroiter, do you rave about your city? If you do business in the city, do you do it with other people, other businesses, and do you shop locally? That's what you do. So here's the deal. I am the grandson of a rag picker. My grandfather used to go on a horse and buggy, pick up merchandise on the sides of the road, and resell it. He then opened up Sam's loan office. My father, my father was a pool hustler. 
who was fortunate enough to marry my mom, who was my popsies, my grandfather's daughter. He was a pool hustler, and he subsidized that pool hustling working in a factory. He worked for Calvinator Nash in the city of Detroit. They used to make refrigerators. And then there's me, who now runs a 50,000 square foot pawn shop in the city of Detroit. It is amazing, absolutely amazing, what this country can do, what you can do in your country to develop. This city was made beautiful because of entrepreneurs. If you have desire, commitment, and drive, there is nothing that you can't succeed with. Absolutely nothing. I hope that my story inspires you. I hope that my story that I just told lights a fire under your ass. And I hope that my story allows you to keep growing. Look at me, pawnbroker, TV guy. A New York Times bestseller, seven-year-old kid that made that sale. How cool was that? So now as Detroiters, which we are, let's face our fear of bankruptcy. Let's face our fear of crime. And let's face our fear of unemployment. And tomorrow morning, and how about right now, ask yourself, how bad do you want it? Ask your neighbor sitting right next to you. How bad do you want it? And tomorrow morning, when you're in front of that mirror, look yourself dead nut in your eye and ask yourself that one major question that I've been asking myself for over 50 years. How bad do you want it? Because if you want it bad enough, you are definitely going to get it. And I hope tomorrow morning you'll think about me up here and you'll do whatever it takes to do whatever it takes. Thank you.